Hello and welcome back to the Join Dota League Season 2 on Hefla TV 1. If you do want to watch the CMB versus Revenge game, that will be over at uh, Hefla TV 2. But on here, we are going to have the third game of a best of three between RTK Gaming and Armada Gaming. The first two games were... I don't know, the first game was a very convincing win for AG. The second game started off fairly even, but slowly but surely, RTK were able to seize control of that game and win it fairly convincingly. So here we are on the third game of the best of three. This is going to be the deciding game in this playoffs match. Uh, so I'll be Grand SV, I'll be one of your casters, and I'll be joined by Hefla. So welcome to the has uh, cast. Ooh. Yeah, like Hefla... Not just being cast, also being manager of Hefla TV has to take care now of all the tickering in the background. That's why I'm going to be silent for at least a part of the draft because I have to mention it again for all the viewers. CNB Revenge will be on Hefla TV too. And we're going to continue here with game number three in this amazing series. So far, like very promising games. So, of course, you can also stick around with us. But yeah, if you want to see your favorite team there, CNB or Revenge, I know there's a huge, huge fan base. Then go to Hefla TV too. I'm changing it right now on the tickers. It will take here and there while because the admins, of course, in the CET region, it's already 3 a.m. And it's a wonder that I'm still up and running and breathing and whatever. So, yeah, just give me a minute. I'm going to change it on all the tickers so people find their games. For now, let's just hop into the draft. I will be with you in like two minutes. Yeah, sounds good. RTK going to ban out the Tidehunter as well as the Batriders, the two very prized offlane heroes to start off these bans. And Brewmaster Lycan taken out by Armada Gaming. As far as the um, other heroes left in the pool, Doom was left. So Armada Gaming going to be all too happy to take that one up for themselves. They'll also pick up the Shadow Shaman to secure a little bit of that pushing power, which we did see you, uh, them use very effectively in Game 1. On the side of RTK Gaming, they're going to go back for this Clockwork that worked out for them very well, even though they are picking up very early for the draft. Usually you don't see Clockwork till later on. But they also have the Disruptor to combo up with that. I don't think we saw it very much last game, but Hookshot with the Cogs on top. You can drop the Static Storm. A lot of ways to keep heroes in place if you are able to get a 2 or maybe even a 3 hero Cogs, even though that's very unlikely. Uh, but still, RTK Gaming have a solid start off to this draft, although I think giving away the Doom and the Shadow Shaman is always something to be fairly scared of, and we'll have to see. I don't know, this game is going to be played on US East. I'm not sure what the f servers for the first two games are, uh, but either way, that is where this game is going to be held. Enigma banned out by RTK Gaming as well as the Death Prophet, so not going to make the same mistake that they did the first game in giving away all of that pushing potential coming out from the DP Enigma as well as Shadow Shaman. And on the other side, Armada Gaming going to maybe respect ban this Nagas Iron away from RTK Gaming. They saw game one, how they were able to use it effectively and combo it with the Disruptor, even though uh, later on it didn't pan out for them and they just weren't able to get enough cohesion with the mass amount of push that Armada Gaming were able to pick up. But they will go ahead and ban that out, as well as the Razor. So a lot of heroes that we've been seeing in this uh, matchup between RTK and Armada are going to be banned out and we're going to have to see something a little bit new. A return performance from Wraith King uh, will come on the side of RTK Gaming. And honestly, their draft is looking very similar. But on the side of Armada, they're going to pick up the Viper, and these lanes are going to be very scary to go up against. Even if they put a lot of pressure early, the Doom can always go back to the jungle, and Viper is just always something difficult to deal with in the laning phase. It's actually pretty interesting. Like, RTK, they stick to what they already had. Like, I mean, it worked out very well. The Clockwork and the Disruptor combination, as well as the Rave King. This is copy-paste Serena all the way through. Like, <laughs> right now... They just needed the panda, yeah, which of course is banned, but of course, you, I, I guess you can just yeah, choose an alternative. On the other side, of course, AG, they seem to have a more versatile draft, but Reserve let's see, time. I mean, RTK, when it comes to informatics, I mean, many of you might know it, never change a running system, and I guess RTK is sticking to that. Yeah, well, without the Brewmaster, who was a very large portion of their running system last game, I'm not sure how well they're going to be able to function uh, without that core piece, and I'm interested to see what they're going to replace it with this game. I'm not sure if there's any other heroes that really fill the same niche as the Brewmaster. His ultimate is pretty unique in the way that it shuts down two heroes pretty much simultaneously if they don't have BKBs with the Cyclone as well as the uh, Boulder Toss. And if you're able to get as much farm as he did last game with like something like an 18 minute Aghanim Scepter Blink, I don't know, you can completely control the team fights. Um, so we'll just have to see what RTK Gaming are going to do to fill that void in this draft. Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's see how it actually goes. I mean, the fourth picks are there, and 
yeah, some stuff like some years of the of the games before they have been banned. Like they even took all the experience from the game one year into this game number three. But I don't know now when it comes to the fourth one, RTK is a bit stuttering, and it's it's exactly the position um, I've been talking about because right now to pretty much replicate their their draft from last game, they would need the panda. But for that, that's of 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 course not possible, and therefore. I don't know they are looking for an alternative and they take quite their time. There is already yeah 130 of the bonus time is down and they decide to go for Mirana. Mirana was on Amara's side in the last game, but now of course we have it here. It is actually quite nice to have the Mirana with the clockwork instead of against because sometimes the cogs is actually a, a nice setup for the enemy Mirana. This way, of course, if you get someone in the cogs, then it's also an easy, easy target. This is a bull's eye, I don't know, as big as Manhattan, you can definitely not miss it. Yep, shooting fish in a barrel. On the side of Armada Gaming, they're going to go ahead and pick up the Abaddon. Well, the Abaddon, very good against this arrow coming up from Rana. The ability to purge off that 5 second stun, if it is a long arrow, is always very strong. And this lineup coming up from Armada Gaming is going to have a very Damn tanky front line with the Doom, who is pretty much inevitably going to build up those auras and a lot of armor items on the Doom, and just with the Scorched Earth, he's fairly tanky naturally in the Viper with the Corrosive Skin, and also the way he builds generally, he's going to get that Mech, Aghanim Scepter, just have a lot of HP to deal with, and this Abaddon just going to make sure that they're able to stay on the front lines and continuously throw out their damage. I don't know, a lot is going to rest on this early game for Armada Gaming. If the Viper is able to get a good early start, as is the Doom, and they're able to snowball a little bit and get into the mid game with at least a decent advantage this could be something very scary for RTG gaming to deal with yep absolutely and to be honest uh, was it i don't know was it with you or with someone else was it today or yesterday i can't remember i'm casting too much actually um we had abaddon and i like the abaddon as soon as i see mirana like it's such an amazing hero unless of course he gets stunned himself before level 6 but other than that like you have what? You have the Rave King stun, you have the Mirana stun, both of them getting removed. Like the heal and the burst damage, of course, of the miscoil of the Abaddon is really, really strong. And I don't know, like they already have two tanky heroes with the Viper and the Doom. They have now, of course, a bit more burst damage and the Shadow the Shaman also some uh, pushing potential. I definitely like this one. Damn, I really like this draft so far. Then again, RTK showed us how well Five they seconds. can play in this Clockwork, Disruptor, and the WK combination. This time it's a Mirana, and okay, something new is also Radiant coming. Pick. Shadow Fiend it is. So that's our mid candidate, and we have a farming Mirana in a tri lane with the Clockwork on the offline. So, yeah, pretty standard draft, and it worked once. Why not twice? Let's see how the Abaddon is actually doing. So far, it looks like it's, of course, a. Uh, it, I don't know. Yeah, it, it has to be support Abaddon. Yeah, definitely. That's... I don't really see a position where they could put him in the core, but back yeah, on this Shadow Fiend pickup, go. RTK Gaming, I actually I don't do. Know. <laughs> like, I mean, we, it wouldn't be the first time that, like, some tier 2, tier 3 team put a Doom in the offline, for example, letting Reserve the Abaddon time. farm and the second support is coming out, the Viper take in mid. We also see some teams with the jungle Doom approach and just rotating in, similar to Enigma. But I, it's a very rare case, but it's not completely impossible. That's, that's what I wanted to say. But, yeah, you're right. Like, 95% is pointing towards, of course, the Abaddon being in a support role. And we're gonna get another core, or uh, just the offlaner. Yeah, it. I don't know. Armada Gaming Viper can go to any of the three lanes. Doom can pretty much go to any of the three as well. I don't think they'll put him mid, um, but either way, offlaner safe lane for the Doom. And well, jungle is an option as well. I don't know. Still very versatile. This last pick is really going to speak to how they're going to lane it. But back to the Shadow Fiend. I don't know, RTK Gaming, they've kind of picked themselves into a little bit of a corner as far as the laning phase is concerned. If they get the Shadow Fiend versus Viper matchup, that can go terribly for the Shadow Fiend, especially early on. Once Shadow Fiend does pick up some souls and get a little cohesion with damage, she can last it up against the Viper, but especially between like 1 and 5 and 1 and 7 really, the Shadow Fiend is going to have a terrible time against the Viper, even if it's just solo. And, well, with like a Wraith King Mirana, they could start roaming on this, or... Excuse me, on the other side, uh, Shadow Shaman could rotate onto the Shadow Fiend and make a pretty easy kill happen on him as well. I think this is one of the rare occasions where I think putting the Shadow Fiend towards the safe lane would be a viable option for RTK Gaming. I don't know, maybe this Viper's going towards the off lane, especially with this OD pickup, and the lane domination is strong with Armada Gaming.
Well, I don't know. This last pickup is something that I really wasn't expecting coming out from them, but I can see it working. I don't know. Most of these lanes are going to be fairly strong for them, and they'll be able to get away with this Doom fairly easily as well. I don't know. This Wraith King's going to have a decently hard time getting off his ultimate, especially Cases early stages with the Astral Imprisonment spam. Coming out from the Outworld Devourer, not to mention that the Sanity's Eclipse is going to drain his mana as well. So depending on the timing of when he comes into these fights, he might not have his uh, reincarnation available to him. Well, I'll go ahead and introduce the Radiant team, and it will be AG playing on the Radiant side. We're going to have I Annihilate playing on the OD towards the off lane. They're going to leave the Doom played by Narek, and on the safe lane, they're going to have Joik playing on the Abaddon, Kilroy on the Shadow Shaman, and the Viper. We'll be farming up the safe lane. We'll be standing one on that position. Yep, and sorry, what did. Did you just take the Radiant side, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, just continue with the with the dire side. So we have Darky here on the clockwork in the offline, as predicted already in the draft. Then the Abyssal again on the Disruptor. He did an awesome job last game. Sold this time here on the Shadow Fiend. Of course, in the mid, uh, 2FB playing the Rave King, just like last game, and Galford this time on a Mirana. Yeah, I don't know. So it looks like these lanes are going to be a little bit different uh, coming out from AG. I was kind of expecting them to go a little bit aggressive with the Viper Abaddon. And maybe dual lanes coming out for them, uh, leaving Kilroy to be the pulling support. I don't know, Viper Baden is just a very difficult lane to deal with. But either way, that's not going to be how it works out. Um, the game is on. It will just be a defensive tri lane coming out from AG, and the Shadow Shaman will have a little bit of room to roam around in this situation. I don't know, the Baden early on is really not going to be uh, serving his purpose as far as purging off those arrows coming out from the Mirana, as Mirana is going to be farming up the safe lane, so the one that is going to have to be a little bit careful as far as arrows are concerned is the Doom. And as long as he doesn't get arrowed, I don't see him dying really in this lane. But with the Wraith King stun to set it up, as well as the glimpse to get him back, it is always an option for them to land those arrows. So I think Narek needs to be a little bit careful in this lane. Yep, absolutely. And as I said, now, in the best of three, when it's 1-1, one, one, like the last game, of course, being the deciding game, you have to be really careful. Because, I mean, game number one, we had like an advantage that came really fast up. And in game number two, it actually took RTK quite a while to, I don't know, bank on their advantage and then make something out of it. They went really systematically, tower by tower, small pickoffs, not risking anything. So they were really willing to like get this through, regardless of the cost, playing very conservatively. And I definitely liked it. But let's see, I mean, this time, whoever is taking the risk of playing very aggressively early, Let's let's see who it is, but I don't know. Judging by the draft, I don't think any team will be very very aggressive. We're gonna have another 40, 50 minutes game if it's just as close as it was in game number two. Yeah, and honestly, it's really hard to say how the game is really going to pan out as far as going late. Shadowfiend probably the hardest carry in this game, or as far as this game is concerned, Guys, rather. Uh, but even him, he's. Doom is available, and they also have plenty of other heroes to control him up uh, with the slows coming out from the Viper. I don't know. Once he gets a BKB, I think this Shadow Fiend has the potential to carry, but still, he needs to get to that point. Right now, oh, it's... Oh, look, we have a Shackle here on the Clockwork, and just some harass coming through. There's not actually anything following. Of course, the Viper could do some damage there, but she went for the Nether Toxin corrosive skin build which is quite interesting to be honest because he puts everything into like the more damage on an already harassed target plus of course helping him uh, find the last hits here on the creeps but overall like having no points in poison attack I'm not a huge fan of it but now with the haste run the clockwork is actually rotating in the mid and the shadow uh, the old world dest devourer destroyer however you want to call it Dota 1 fans know what I'm talking about I hate the devourer name so I stick to destroyer the same with windrunner Wind, what, what's the new name on Windrunner? Wind Ranger. Oh yeah, Wind Ranger. Jesus, those names are so atrocious. I don't even want to use them. But yeah, either way, he's he's just backing off, which is probably the right decision. I don't know. Darky not having a great time in this lane. Hasn't been able to find his level two yet. Just been completely zoned out. Not even really taking a lot of harass, but he just can't risk the. Well, up on top, we are going to have a stun going to Narek, a nice arrow to follow this up. That's going to be a long stun onto this Doom. Doom is going to be in a little bit of trouble. The body blocks aren't going to be there with the Scorched Earth. He might be able to get away. No, Glimpse is going to be there. Abyssal does have the level 2 available. Here comes the heal as well as the shield coming out from the Abaddon. And Doom survives. <laughs> I've been talking about it. Like, I mean, Doom is such with two points in Scorched Earth, as well as the Unholy Aura, like which is 4 HPS plus the base uh, 1.5 HPS he has now on level 3. 
I don't know, it's 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 awesome. Like he just regen up so much in this fight. Plus of course the Abaddon coming in with a nice rotation, Miss Colon and a Photic Shield combination, so easy. But RTK still wants to go for it. They have another rotation here in the mid directly on the Oddball Destroyer, but he uh, he's gone exactly the right direction. Perfectly done. Like he saw the the second he saw that he was going to the right, so no way with a level one glimpse you can do anything, of course. Not to mention the Rave King without boots. Yeah, that's why I don't like it. Like that's that's actually why I like on Dream Protector and on Rave King support. I really like the the brown boots setup. Like going brown boots and then sh one share tango and a clarity. That's pretty much what the supports can do for each other. But yeah, all we have another go here. At least on the clockwork. Well, down in bottom, Clockwork taking a lot of damage from that Nether Toxin. He's shooking through the trees, and it looks like he'll survive, but taking a lot of harass, and Darkie still hasn't managed to find his level 2. He will be able to salve up and probably will be able to find the next uh, skill, uh, but still not having a wonderful time in this offlane at all, and Doom is definitely getting the better half. I like this lightning choice coming out from AEG a lot better than what they had previously. I think leaving the Abaddon in the offlane up against Samrana is probably the better decision, just in case they decide to go on him, having the Aphotic Shield is always wonderful. Uh, so, yeah, he'll probably just end up soaking experience, but in the end, I think that's just what Abaddon should do. Yep, I, I guess so, but it was really unfortunate, actually, Bottom, that the Viper didn't get that kill. Like, he was really close to the Cox, and I, I thought, like, he's gonna go just a bit more top and then to the left, and then he's actually gonna get that Clockwork. I mean, he has two points in Nether Toxin. He's hitting like a truck when you're that low. And a level 2 poison attack, so that was easy for him, but oh, I think they want to go for the Outworld Radiant Destroyer, Radiant but Radiant yeah, Radiant Clockwork Radiant. just showing up there. He's he's very mobile, you know, just shifting Radiant forth and back Radiant between Tower. those lanes. You I definitely know. like it, but I don't know, he's not finding anything in the Outworld Destroyer, really playing carefully. Yeah, I don't know, Darky just hasn't been able to find an opening on this map at all, and... As far as the supports on the side of RTK, they're also fairly level starved. This Wraith King sitting at level 2, Disruptor also not looking too great. They've tried to rotate a lot, but haven't been able to find anything. They will smoke up here, and this might be the uh, point of the game where they're actually able to make a kill happen. OD is looking like a ripe target for a gank, and it looks like that's going to be the decision that they'll make. They are taking a fairly long path around to this middle lane, but it is nighttime, and they should be able to make this no, happen. Oh, but oh. in the meantime, the clockwork in his own cocks, but this time the Viper not doing the mistake to come too close, getting pushed back. No, he stood on the outside, and level 2 poison attack, as well as 2 points in toxin. easy going for clockwork, but he's pretty much instantly back to Pete, and now, is there a rotation or anything? No, nope, they still decide to go for the mid. Unfortunately... I have to say that the timing of RTK is pretty bad when it comes to rotations because each and every time they rotate in the mid, the creep wave is pushed out. So it's it's like the the worst possible timing, but maybe they still make it work. There's the stun. Yeah. Yeah. Wraith King. Double damage from the Shadow Fiend. Yep. Two raises is all he needed. Yep. I don't know. Not much else that really needs to be said about that. But he just got cut out. There's he's a fairly easy hero to gank, and with the Wraith King coming out from fog, didn't look like he expected with that um, positioning coming out from him and. Be a fairly easy kill. 2FB going to take a little bit of harass behind the tower from the Abaddon. Uh, but that's going to be about it. These supports are fairly low on mana. Abyssal does have one more glimpse, or has a glimpse. Didn't need to throw it out last engagement. I don't know. I'm not sure if I really like Darky going back to this bottom lane. He's just taking too much. He can't manage this. He's managed to find his level 3, but Darky needs his level 6 so bad. I'm not sure where they're going to be able to find the room on the map to give it to him, though. Yeah, and to be honest, this Viper is my new best friend, because unfortunately you can check it on, on, on that Dota or any other site, like the statistics for PT versus face boots on Viper, it's it's absolutely shocking for me, like there's still so many players, even in the pro scene, building PTs on a Viper just for the early stats rush, but I think it's one of the biggest mistakes, Viper is one of the slowest hero, like even with the face boots, uh, he has only a free 5-5 movement speed. The With the face boots, he gets, of course, the plus 50, which is a free 8-8. Eight, eight. But even that, like, he's even face boots activated, sometimes slower than other heroes of similar kind. And that's why I think face boots is absolutely a must-have on the Viper. And, like, in comparison, like, all this damage on the clockwork that was just possible because the Viper actually had the face boots, otherwise the clockwork can even run away from a level 2 poison attack. That's the frustrating thing. So, yeah, he's my new best friend simply because he chose to go for face boots on the Viper. It's, I think, the best choice for this game and for this lane he is on. Dive yeah, 2FB sitting on a haste turn. Looks like he's going to give it over. I don't know. He looks like he's going to get cut out. He's going to be astraled up. 
Ooh. Where's Let's see the Clems? Going to go they down. need the Clems. And they're There's going the to connect. It's going to bring it back. The Wraith King is a little bit too forward. They will be able to get an Aphotic Shield onto the OG, but it's not going to matter. Another heal coming out. He's keeping him alive for a little bit longer. The defensive Astral is only going to delay the inevitable. One more auto attack is all they need, and they'll give the kill to the Shadow Fiend to top it all off. Now the bad needs to be in a full retreat with the Haste Rune. Wraith King looking for it. Oh, with the Astral, he just doesn't have any mana. has mana for one stun, and that's it. Only if he has a full mana pool as well. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and Clockwork actually just got the Viper attack. Now with the face boots, he's trying to circle around. There is... Oh, level 2 at the... Yeah, perfect. The other shock in combination with the double... Oh, actually, four points now in Nether Toxin. So Clockwork not happy on his offlane here. This is the second time he's getting just snacked away. The Shadow Shaman already being level 5. That means Radiant soon, very soon, actually. We might actually see level 6 yeah, here. If the Viper would... No, they don't even need the Mass Serpent Wards here. They're gonna get that tower probably either way. But of course he has the arcane boards, and if he gets level six, they might even go for the tier two tower. Let's see if the clockwork actually manages to get something done here, as in deny. But I think if he denies, then he's risking his own life. But there's oh, TP back in instant hex onto two FB, but it's a very low level hex, and they'll be able to stun up, stand in one. Now they're going to glimpse him out of the clouds. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication there. He's going to mech. He's so tanky, and we'll be able to turn on the clockwork. And now the Wraith King going to fall as well. The misquote coming up from the Abaddon, and they'll be able to pick up two. Now the tower oh, uh, should fall, and you. <laughs> oh god, I don't know. The Viper was still trying to get something down on the disruptor. In the meantime, we have the Outworld. Just Destroy here doing some right click damage on the Shadow Fiend, but that was actually funny to watch. The Viper was so focused on the Disruptor that he didn't notice that the tower next to him just needed one more hit to get killed and last hit on him. And in the end, he he had no chance to get the Disruptor even with face boot, so he might have as well just get go for the tower. But yeah, nice turnaround there by AG. This Viper is going ham here, so much farm level 8 in 10 minutes, and that was pretty much with. The Shadow Shaman all the time being present, and now they can just go mid. They have the Master Open Wards, and all they have to do is somehow either zone out the Shadow Fiend. Oh my god, they get that was not the smartest move by the OD. He's getting a lot of damage there, but yep. if they get some sort of disable on him, they can go for this tower easily. Master Open Wards, they're up. Do we even have a second pair of Arcane Boots? No, this was still Kilroy having it. But look at RTK, they don't want to make let this happen look at them this is 5-5 five, five Dota 11 minutes 5 men Dota in mid someone I don't know got just got a memo there's a huge party around the tier 1 tower and well. look at it it's starting there's the arrow, not going to land. Actually, Kilroy going to walk straight into it. Now the Viper, he's man fighting up against Clockwork, and now he's trying to decide which target to go on. Glimpse back on the Doom. Not sure who he doomed. It was the Shadow Fiend. He doesn't really care all that much about doomed or being doomed, but in the end, it is just going to zone them away from this tier one tower while the Serpent Wards focus onto him. And now on the back lines, Viper looking to claim the kill on two of going to be the first to fall. Darky also very low, and he'll be able, or forced to completely back off. Deny attempt, or rather, no, last hit. Uh, going to be given to the Shadow Shaman with the Serpent Wars Astral Imprisonment going on to Galford, but he'll be able to leap away to safety. The Raze is going to land on all three, but with the mechanism, they just don't care. They're diving this tower, Air to Fly going to land on the Viper. It really doesn't matter. Photic Shield going to take that one off, and they'll be able to get yet another kill. Six and two in the favor of AG, and well, looks like they want to keep on putting pressure on this tier two tower, and why not? They're all in position. Rana being pinged out. OD wants to go for this, possibly, and well... Five man Dota yet again, they're going to abandon the middle lane and go for this pickoff on Oh, and Mirana. They wrap around here. Mirana has to TP out ASAP instantly as soon as he gets it because the range creep is even following him. But I don't know, with the Shadow Shame in there. He still didn't use the TP. The arrow not flying. Now the arrow actually gave away his position. Now with the hacks, he can just hold him there. Like this. Oh, now he's sleeping out of it. Too bad, no hacks reaction coming, and the rest actually abandon him because they want to go for the clockwork. The orbs of the OD already doing so much damage. This is just level one, but of course he had two Astro imprisonment at that point when he was hitting. Plus the Viper, this is just insane. And look at the OD, maybe they find here the Wraith King. He still doesn't have his ultimate. There is the stun. Let's see what they get. Annihilate oh, drops the ultimate on the clockwork, just completely obliterates him. Now 2FB, the next to fall, it seems, shackled in place. One more auto attack from Doom will secure his Doom, and now, arrow to fly, not going to land on any of these heroes. It might have been close, but in the end, won't matter. Doom diving behind the tower. He's falling very low. He will be healed up, and now the Serpent Wars. Astral in prison to make sure he doesn't die. Not sure if that was necessary, but in the end, with the Serpent Wars, they should be able to clean up this tower. Mirana trying to clean up the creep away, but she might just die here. Will be forced completely back. Alfred does have a leap, probably will leap up to the high ground. Ugh. They shouldn't go for that. Tier 2 Tower is still going to take a lot of damage from these Serpent Wards, and in the end, it looks like it will fall. AG, 
Probably should back after this. I don't know. With the way they've been playing, they might hang around. OG is at least going to farm up this wave. He has a full four staff in the uh, stash here, and it looks like, I don't know, mid might be the next choice. TP away from Soul. Yeah, good decision there. Viper probably would have killed him. Um, but either way, nothing going to happen. Double damage rune spawns bottom, will be spotted out and picked up probably by the OD. Yeah, I think AG is, is I don't know, creating a snowball here that is very hard to stop. RTK has to answer and strike back very soon. This was three towers, a horrible team fight for them. And even though AG threw out like random doom on the SF, just pushing him out and they still got two kills there and the two towers, I, I don't know. Like, it's it's really hard for RTK to actually strike back now. They have to get something done. Right now, they can benefit a bit from the fact that AG is, is relatively low in mana and HP, but they get that soon back, and I don't know, I think they're soon up and ready to go for more. 30 seconds on the Master Open Wards. The Shadow Shaman also getting quite nice XP, so we're looking in, a, I don't know, in a few minutes at a level 2 Master Open Wards, and just look at the crafts. It's time to look at the net worth as well as, of course, the crafts. But maybe they're gonna find something. Oh, the Rave King still not level six. And there's a double damage. Yeah, look just look at the, the OG melt through him, and he'll be able to get the kill. Moran <laughs> ultimate has been deployed. Should keep the Shao Fiend safe. They drop a ward down, and he's body blocking them. They should know he's there. Do they have any detection? No, they don't. And, well, a little bit of a side note. Joik, his build is very interesting. Maxes out the Miskoil and doesn't go for ult at six. But either way, they're just walking all over them, and in mid. I don't know. Go right. Yep, at least they traded the Rave King for a tier one tower, but look at this. They're all surrounded. Like, someone and will die here. Very yes, soon. Serpent Word's deployed, but on the back lines, they're going to find out Darky the Slayer Viper with those face boots. Guys, throw up the Viper Strike. The way of Darky. It looks like middle lane's going to be the more interesting engagement. Hookshot from downtown will connect on I Annihilate, and now they'll be able to get the kill on the Shadow Fiend as well. Doom going to be the way of the Disruptor. The army dropped his ultimate. Not sure if that Doom is really worth it. Everybody's very low, but they'll be able to get all those kills. Now with the mechanism, they're all sustaining through this. And in the meantime, Serpent Word's get the tier 2 tower, and, well... <laughs> AG, that wasn't just... even Scorched Earth use. That was not even Scorched Earth use. This was just healed by the Aphotic Shield. And the funny part is, the yeah, Abaddon even getting a double kill here. And they go directly to the tier 3. Why not? Three heroes are down. Like, those heroes, they have even such a low respawn timer. Because they're so low level. I mean, the Rave King, not even level 6. Level 6 is really something they could need. But look at the damage done. Oh, a nice arrow here on the Shadow Shaman. Maybe this is the opening we are looking for. No, it's not. He's healed up right by the Abaddon. And now they found out Darky the Slayer. He's just obliterated. And now... They find out 2FB. 2FB not that level 6, and GG called oh. out by Darky. Yeah, I mean, it's the Force right. Force F in ultimate oh. coming up from OD. Oh. Just obliterates them, and Soul going to die as well. Mechanism keeps them all alive, and finish the uh, game with style there as I annihilate yep. picks up an ultra kill. Do, 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 do. MC Hammer at the end, directly from the OD on three targets. Amazing play by AG. As I said, at some point we saw a snowball, and this wasn't just a snowball, this was an entire avalanche followed by the entire mountain coming in RTK's direction, like no chance to stop it. Towers, heroes, everything was falling right and left. And to be honest, MVP was Viper in combination with the Abaddon and even the Shadow Shaman had a huge impact. I mean, the Doom was relatively passive. The Outwill Destroyer in the end did quite his fair share, but yeah, Viper rocking the show on his safe lane, getting all the kills by uh, Darky the Feeder. <laughs> or however you want to call him, sorry. Like, random rant. Had to be. Either way, very nice and convincing way for AG. So guys, join Hafla TV 2, CNB versus Revenge, another American game. Um, I will be pretty much playing some Dota now. Grandis here is going to join Kylie in the second game of the CNB versus Revenge game, I think. And yeah, that's pretty much it for Hafla TV 1. So if you like what we do, then follow us on our channels, of course, Hefla TV 1, Hefla TV 2, and Hefla Moog, the free English channels. And of course, on our social on our social media, you always have the latest news, what's coming up, what games, what tournaments, what casters, etc. Facebook, Twitter, Hefla TV, and on Hefla Moog at YouTube. You can always see the bots if you missed a game or you want to see your favorite player all over again. Either way, everything is helping us. So thanks for tuning in. And then see you soon, or see you on Hefla TV 2, where we're also going to be chatting a bit with the viewers, and as usual. So see you there, Hefla TV 2.